here in zero, which is unique as far as I know. I haven't seen any other accounting software that has that nice little breakout. And so we can go in and just see our equity accounts. And then uh, I want, so they have an owner's draws here. So that's good. We don't really need this capital account because I, I would rather have this retained earnings be called capital. So I'm just going to call it uh, own, owner capital account or something like that. That's just a preference. To, again, you could keep it retained earnings, but that's what I would uh, put it down as. And then this one, I'm going to I'm going to not use it. This is owner's capital. This is I'll call this beginning beginning equity. This will be my equity. This will be my equity account that I used just for my beginning balances. So now I've got that amount in there. What I'd like to do is just roll that into uh, the owner's capital account. So in other words, if I go over here and I update this, all I'm going to do is take it out of out of this account 57 five seven three nine six and put it into the capital account now sometimes they try to limit you from making a transaction into the capital account so you got it so because this is the account that we roll into the income statement rolls into it so they sometimes put limitations on what you can do to the capital account so let's check it out so i'm going to try to do a journal entry to it and we'll say okay let's go to our reports and let's go to our journal report the journal report por favor that's what we need and then i'll make an add new journal and let's just check out down here before we start it do they allow us to post to that equity account so the the uh, owner's capital accounts yes it looks like it so we'll say this is going to be beginning balance as of december again so the end of last year December 22 and we'll say okay this is going to be the capital account so I called it owner's capital and that's going to be a credit right it's going to be let me check it out it's going to be a credit because it's going to go up over here to that one of 57 396 if you get it backwards then you can go back in and say okay I went the wrong way with it and then the other side is going to go to the beginning equity which is 57 so now we'll just put it all into one equity account so we'll just say all right let's check it out save it and see if it does what we would like so let's go back to the balance sheet and update it to refresh it i like some up-to-date reports we don't want some old stuff in our reporting so there's the 77 uh, 896 so if i go into that then we could see our journal entry that we posted to it. And I'll change the beginning date range to see that. So here's our journal entry. If I go into that journal entry, it'll take us uh, back to our form. If we needed to edit it, by the way, we can hit the drop down and edit it if we had the journal entry going the wrong way or something like that. So I'm gonna go back on over, back to the balance sheet. Okay, so let's take one more check down here. Notice that everything's in the owner's capital, which was the retained earning before. If I go back to 2022 now, and I say I want to look at last uh, end of last year, and I update this. Now it's got the two items down here, the current year earnings, which, which is the net income, which it puts into its own account. It's going to track that as you know revenue happens and expenses net income on the income statement and then it'll, it'll roll it into at the end of the close of each year to the capital account which was the retained earnings account so so in other words it won't look quite right until we do the closeout process which will happen in the current year so if i then go into last month let's say 2023 now we've got that one account that it's closing out to so most a lot of accounting software does this where it tries to give you that linking indication between the income statement and the balance sheet by putting the current period net income into its own line item that can actually be a little bit annoying sometimes when you're trying to break out that capital account say to different partnership 
accounts in accordance with a partnership agreement or something like that. But on the other hand, it does give you that nice indication and, and link between the income statement and the balance sheet. So if we track this stuff now, we've achieved our goal, I think. Let's just double check and see if the goal has been achieved. So we've got all of our beginning balances here, which should tie out. So we've got the checking account, the checking account, the uh, accounts receivable, accounts receivable, the inventory, inventory, the 7,500 accumulated depreciation, 75,000 here, looks good. And then we've got the 15, 15, the one, the one, the 22, the 22, and even, and we spelled it properly. This way. And then we've got the, the owner's equity, which I called owner's capital. Okay, let's keep it at that. And uh, the other report that you could look at over here, I'm gonna to go to the profit and loss and try to open a trial balance uh, report. So you could go to uh, the reports and see it in a trial balance format, which is often nice. So we can go to the good old trial balance. And if I look at it this way, as of the end of, of 2022, we've got the same kind of format. So this is quite nice, uh, a nice format to be able to do because it's a lot shorter and you only need one report to look at it, but you don't have those subtotals. And note the balance sheet and the income statement are on top of each other. So right here, you can see the owner's capital account has the 57,396 and then the 20,005 in 2022. If I move up a day, then this is gonna move into here so, and we won't have any income statement accounts on the trial balance. So if I move this up to this year, we have the same top half, but now, uh, hold on a second. The service item is still there. Oh no, hold on, I see what it's doing, it's doing a comparison. So this is as the end of 2022. So everything's the same, but then it put in the the capital account is here as opposed to there's there's no income statement accounts for the year to, to date column. And this is the last year, which it basically put, instead of having debits and credits, it kind of put the credits as uh, a negative number. All right, so we're all set up pretty much for going forward now. Now that we have our beginning balances, we can add new data for the current year that we're working in, that being 2023.